Uh, so, thank you all, uh, Nadi. Thank you for bearing up with us during uh, those uh, technical issues. Hopefully, we're going to be joined by a few more people over the, the next few minutes. Uh, so, I'm Kevin Ashley. Uh, I'm uh, director of the Digital Curation Centre, and I'm just going to give really uh, an introduction uh, to uh, this uh, week of events. Uh, of 10, well, actually 10 plus years of DMP and lines, I'll explain uh, in uh, a moment um, and describe where we came from uh, and to some extent where we're going. Um, and apologies to those of you who may have been at the Deliver RDM workshops that were taking place uh, a couple of weeks ago. You'll have heard some, but not all of this before. So a bit of context and history. I'm sure Many of you uh, are aware of what DMP Online is, but for those who aren't, it's a web-based service that helps researchers and those they work with create and maintain data management plans. It was launched uh, in 2010 uh, by the DCC, uh, shortly before I took up my post here. And that's why I say really in a sense it's 10 plus years. That was the, the launch, but clearly there was a period of development uh, and, and conception of the idea that went before that, but we're choosing the launch. Uh, to, to, to mark the celebration. We'll be hearing more about that later. Um, the DCC was then a national body funded by JISC, uh, which in a radical rebranding has now renamed itself as JISC. Um, and it was initially really aimed just at researchers. That was our target market and aimed at the UK because our funding uh, was uh, for the support uh, of, of UK research. But we saw international potential in this uh, from the outset, uh, and we wanted to demonstrate that this was something not just dealing with the peculiar requirements of UK research or UK funders, uh, but, but was uh, indeed internationalizable. And so we, we added in uh, the few requirements of US funders uh, uh, from the outset. It was free to use, and I think it's fair to say the international interest in it exceeded our initial expectations. And a lot of work then happened over the next five years we made major revisions, um, in, including services uh, and space for organizational administrators. We made the code uh, open source, and that was a part uh, of a general um, shift to openly licensing everything that the DCC was doing and making that our, our default. And we thought hard about how to attract um, the international funding to support an international service. We initially assumed that we'd be do that by going to national funding bodies and with some exceptions, I think we were wrong about that. You'll be hearing more about that later. And we could also see that that national UK funding was under threat and so we pursued other routes to support feature development and indeed we got our host university to invest some of its own money in paying some of the, the, the running and development costs at the time. And by the end of 2015, we had our first paying overseas customers and that brings in a whole bunch of things that aren't to do with co-development or anything else, they're to do with contracts and service agreements and legal uh, and administrative support. Um, and we knew by then that our predictions about losing national funding were right. And so fast forwarding to the present day, we've these figures are probably already out of date, but the last time we, I checked, um, it was being used by 203 organizations, 83 countries, and I'm gonna go through all of these um, numbers here but it's used uh, by research organizations and paid for uh, by over 50 so far. The code is still open source, um, uh, the DMP roadmap. It's still free to use for the end researchers, whether or not their organization or funder subscribes. Uh, and I think one other interesting tale about development here is that the team and the service team behind it is bigger than it ever was when we were being supported by national grant funding. And there you can see in that second map, that's those who are making use of that open source code base to support their own services. And I'll say a little bit more about that distinction. Um, between the two uh, in a moment. So I think there's a number of different aspects of DMP Online that we're gonna consider this week. It was a software development project that became open and collaborative. That involves lots of the issues that, that, that co-development uh, always has. If you've read the second man month, the, the sorry, the, the mythical man month, one of the, the classic texts uh, of, of uh, project uh, management uh, in software, you'll know about what in other contexts is described as the difficult second album problem. Uh, we've certainly gone through that uh, with DMP in line. It involves throwing a lot of things away, being ready to change the code, even though you don't necessarily want to change what the user sees, or sometimes changing what the user sees, even if you don't necessarily want to change the code very much. But as well as that, it was a means of promoting behavior change amongst researchers, funders, and research organizations to think of data management planning as a 
a way of working that helped you ser- do better research uh, and, and produce better results for society as a whole. It's also a service that moved from grant support to self-sustaining support with all of that implies. And each of these things, the code, the behavior change, the service aspects are interlinked, uh, uh, but different. And to give one example, really, there are many services using that same open source code base, DMP roadmap. So DMP tool uh, in the USA, uh, DMP assistant and DMP online are all services, quite distinct services with different promises to their users, different ways of engaging with them that are all using a single source code base. There are many, many people to thank, uh, that, and we're going to be hearing from some of them this week. I guess some of it really is my predecessors in DCC management. When I came along here, I inherited something that was already in existence. Uh, so thanks, uh, I'm sure, to Chris Rusbridge, a previous director, Graham Pryor, who was the assistant director at Edinburgh, uh, and all those who originally sanctioned the idea that this was uh, a good thing to do. The funders who at different times have supported it, JISC, the European Commission, and the University of Edinburgh, the project and the service managers, Martin Donnelly, Sarah Jones, Patricia Herterick, uh, all of whom are glad are, are with us today and we're going to be hearing at different times about their uh, experiences. Um, a team of developers from John Patton and Fail, Adrian Richardson, Patrick McGann, uh, a team from Dean, Jimmy Angelakos, Jose Loret Perez, John Pinto, Colin Gormley, Martin Nicholson, Sam Rust and Ray Carrick, who've been supported at various times by interns, Theo Haim, Killian Dunn, Damodar Soika, um, I could mention that Sam actually could appear in that list twice because he began as one of our interns and is now uh, our, our lead developer. And it's great uh, when we, we see things happen uh, in that way. There's also the collaborators uh, on, on that uh, open source uh, project uh, and particularly really got to single out the team at the University of California Curation Center, Brian Riley, Stephanie Sims, Marissa Strong, John Chudaki, uh, uh, my counterpart over there, and Maria Pritzelis. Uh, and apologies if I've left anyone out from that particular list. I mentioned moving to the service, you know, we've got um, legal and admin issues to deal with. Uh, Lorna Brown uh, and David Matheson uh, in, in the U- University of Edinburgh legal team are really key to getting that uh, underway. It's involved user testing and um, indeed a help desk, Diana Sisu and Magdalena Gettler, I give particular credit for there. Uh, and many of you are familiar with Magdalena Drafiova, uh, who's our customer development manager. So what's gonna come this week? Well, you're gonna hear more about that service from its beginnings to its future. You'll hear more about those effects of behavior change we're trying to achieve from users, funders, and RDA working groups. And hopefully you'll get to talk with us and share your thoughts and plans on the future of data management planning and how it can benefit research. So I'm gonna hand over now to those of you, uh, to those who are gonna be able to cover all of these aspects for us this week. Thanks very much.